Hello, everyone. My name is Mike Jones. I am the education manager with um, OETUG. Uh, I'd like to welcome everyone to today's e-learning session titled uh, Adopt Speed to Value, Maximize ROI from Your ERP Investments. Before we dive in and get started, I'd like to briefly introduce everyone to OETUG. In case you're new to our programming, we're a community of, o of Oracle users. We provide education, networking, and support to our members. November 14th through the 18th, we are running Cloud ERP Week. We have a lot of great sessions uh, for members only. Um, <coughs> Uh, sign up for that. We uh, have a lot of sessions. If you did go to Cloud World last week, that um, that you may not have seen. So um, please sign up for that. Uh, make sure to save the date for our next in-person conference. It'll be at Orlando uh, from June 11th to 14th, 2023. Um, we have a huge uh, Cloud ERP track with lots of sessions. I'll place a link for that in the chat area. Just a quick reminder for today's webinar: you will be on mute throughout the session. However, you're welcome to send questions at any time in the chat area, the question box, or the control panel, and we'll address those at the end of the session. We're recording the session. The recording, as well as the slide deck, will be available to OETUG members in the knowledge base. You'll see that link in the chat area. Next, I'd like to turn it over to uh, one of our kind of seasoned presenters. He's with a great partner company that really um, does a lot of uh, amazing stuff. His name is Praman, and he's with DataVail. Take it away. Yeah, thank you all. Uh, good afternoon, uh, depending on the time zone, East Coast to the West Coast. Uh, good morning in the West Coast. Thank you all for the time. And I think uh, this session is to touch upon certain areas we all live through a day in, in our day in life about we hear a lot of these things around that oh, we need to do this thing fast, that thing fast, and how do we get the value out of it so that our business community is investing in modernization aspects of it. And I just want to touch upon that before we go that far. And so just give me a second. Oh, one second. So before we get that, uh, we would like to encourage you to do give us a feedback so that we can improvise and provide better solutions or better delivery of our content in the future as well. By doing that, you get, you have a small goodies here. Which, uh, we encourage you to spend a few minutes of your time, valuable time to give us your feedback. Being said that, so um, I, I, as Mike mentioned, my name is Pramod Delory. I've been doing this since the inception of before, way before the ERP started where we were building our own custom enterprise applications way before a construct of ERP was even considered. And I have lived through the evolution aspects of it through through the operational efficiency to modernization process of it. And we have lived, I have lived through the journey of what Oracle has been doing since the early 90s to all the way today and beyond. So I have a lot of stories around and a lot of experiences being a business user, a business running a business operations to a, an advisor today working with uh, C-level executive boards to kind of put some technology committees and valuable solutions around it. So I'm, I'm a part of DataVail Corporate. DataVail, we, we, have, we have a wide array of enterprise portfolio offerings to our, our customers, which covers every aspects of an enterprise. We, we have done, we, have, we are agnostic to any providers, whether it is any type of service providers, we internally have some IP. Uh, we built around it to help our customers to provide high delivered value solutions. And when it comes down to the, the Oracle Cloud world, we have, have a wide array, array, array of aspects of every part of Oracle Cloud offering. We have been there, done that, and provided our to our cu customers, providing value uh, modernization abilities. Being said that, uh, that I want to just gotta go through the agenda very high level. The reason for we are here is I'm going to touch upon a few areas about what is driving the, the change and what is that need of the hour apart from the pandemic, which got hit two years, got expedited from months to days or weeks. Before, we used to have a strategy for a couple of years, but now it's almost like every three months we have to deliver value. <clears throat> As we go through the journey, I'm, I'm going to touch upon some areas about what drove us to that and what's going to, how we're going to come out of it and continually continuous process. A couple of challenges around it and how, what we need to look for and kinds of stuff. This is the agenda I'm going to touch upon. 
And at the end, I'm going to touch upon what data we're looking at all the customer base, our install base, and over the last decade or so, implementing our cloud kind of transformations. We came up with our own offering to give you that ability to scale up fast to show value to the customer. Our customers are business users so that we can able to have the sponsorship or investments or adoption scale up. Being said that, so this is basically what is what is today is different than before it has been that a lot of things are happening because of pandemic, either consolidations happening in the industry or that our systems are getting out of compliance or we are, we are identifying new opportunities thanks to iPhone that you, you're trying to offer services on your mobile phones, basically, which mean that we have to scale up beyond our means what was traditionally upon that the production services to the modern modern world of subscription based kind of models and stuff to in order to support that business initiatives that our systems have to grow fast enough and when you go to layer down our back offices are still have to catch up with it so as a result of it we either going for an acquisitions or we either building up the services with building our um, a, a software as a service kind of solutions, but patching up behind the scenes to make their offices. But but some of the guiding principles based on this, what we have seen is we have to have the relevance around what drives our cloud innovation, what would be our due diligence or the rigor we need to put together and how do we make a blueprint replicable and, and consistently deliver the value to the business so that they can scale up, they see the value and they realize. Um, when I go one layer down, most of the challenges right now in the technology groups or technology committees are basically the technology as an enabler here is we have three options there. That we stay as this, invest more into our dying or aging kind of situation, which means we'll have to increase our OPEX and CAPEX aspect of it versus find our way in the hybrid mode where some other new functionality or new new business uh, enablements we need that we will enable in the cloud, with, but we have to back integrate into our current on-prem. You're still going to be there, but you're tippy-toeing into the cloud to make sure that you get the confidence moving on. Or take a leap of faith going into the cloud and say, but you need to think about the what, the when, the how. Um, again, so some organizations are mature enough to have a blueprint constantly updated and, and those are mature organizations or semi-mature organizations are they have whatever is relevant whatever is very important for them was, was there but so some of them they don't have i'm not saying don't have it's, it's not a negative word it's about not caught catch caught up with it with all the updates and then the, the, the last but not least is companies who started after 2008 started with the, the adoption of new technologies you hear a company called fang which is like all these companies who have started rewriting their own business models without going through that the age old client server technologies again I, when i take this into the next level that now what would be fits to our model in this how do i come out of this dilemma that's where we call ourselves a transformation since that we have four different stages of transformation. You just have to look for either a project or a program, depending on how you look at it. Whether we migrate to make take a value of our technology shift or whether we have to migrate and optimize our processes so we can scale. That today we can cater a self-service or other abilities of production service. Or we need to find some technology to optimize so that our customer engagement and customer feedback is taken into consideration for us to grow fast and maximize the value. Or ultimate goal is to transform. How do you transform from an on-prem into a into a, a service methodology in, in mindset into the cloud? This, it all comes down to how what is right sizable thing, what is the best value. Every dollar we invest, we need to see a return on investment. How do we size them? How do you go with it? And depending on that, you're going to have some risk. We need to mitigate, monitor, and checkpoints have to be established. Sponsorships have to be strong enough to have accountability metrics, and we go from there. And as a team, we have to collaborate. Again, when, when, I, when we make this kind of judgment about like, oh, I like this, let's adapt to it, but what is, what is the challenges we're going to run into? Based on 
are, are uh, what we have seen in the market, the working with the customers, engaging with the customers as empathizing with their understanding the scenario. There's a lot of, lot of these things are relevant to whether it is a, a, a sponsorship challenges, because that, that we're basically holding accountability or defined goals. What is our goal? What is what we're gonna aim at it? Communication strategies, change management was one of the key. Delivering a piece of known is easy, but the unknown angels are around that. How do we intercept the changes? How strategically we plan ahead of the time? How we prepare our business? Till now, till the cloud came into picture, Business always goes to an IT, uh, have a problem. IT we used to tear, roll up the sleeves and make them as a challenge, solve the problem. But what cloud has changed the scale at it is that instead of the IT departments or the technology teams waking up two o'clock, three o'clock in the morning, now they want this to be more sustainable so that business will own and start working towards it. So, so some of the challenges are all mutual. Um, and some of the challenges are more towards sustainability. And I think we all have lived through it and we have gone through it. And so we have to come up with our methodology and solution. If I take one notch level up, we have to do introspect our stuff. You guys know your system very well. We need to say where the complexities are. We have to put it in the bucket because if someone has lived through it, is that there's an analogy you can say that what got us here right now in a, in a, in a, in a dilemma right now at a crossroads will not take us to the next level unless we change our mindset. So depending on, we have to be introspect on what, what we have learned for it. Let's say I would keep a one, a one to two years, last two years, what was a painful thing? We were trying to do the same thing again and again and again. And we have to start holistically put, put a view together and say, is it the process we are trying to solve or is that customization, which is becoming a pain we have to resolve or some kind of a third party product, which is not scaling up with your needs to look for it. How good is our data? Because everything is data today. Uh, the data is a fuel. Data is also kind of giving us that anomalies detected to move on. So, so again, it all comes down to how you look at you from a complexity to the business process. Where do we stand? from a scale perspective, how are we gonna be, how modern is or how obsolete is. While looking at a business process, I look at different framework called how are we aligned with the with our industry best practices, which mean relevant to your industry, not a product or, or somebody saying it in your relevant industry, whether you're a financials or supply chain based or, or innovation companies, you have to look at that versus if you look at ERP, how old is your ERP? When was the last upgrade happened? Are you satisfied with it? These are some of the tough questions we need to ask ourselves. That's the reason why I had the, I have to borrow the quote from a different kind of relevance from a management style, but I have to use it to our, our world. What got us here into a state will not take us to the next level unless we change our mindset, uh, basically. Being said that, again, then now you look in that, now I got, we got a problem, we got a situation, we have identified where the stuff is, if depending on our culture, uh, depending on the technology we are adapting, I rather be in in the middle. Middle. No, I I rather because early adopters mean we are we are investing on in our technology where you need a little bit of innovation internally as well as some technical side of the story. If you're a middle middle, if you're in the middle when it comes to adoption, you have a long uh, runway for us. Plus, also it's more stable aspects of it. It also we have to look at depending on what it will satisfy. Is it the problem is gonna solve 70% of the problem or is it solves 10% of the problem? 10%, I would try to look harder, can I increase that number to more adoption? Again, depending on how you wanna look at it and the culture is where you apply this and identify where in this graph from a current state to the company profile is company culture. I would look at it as we fall into from an investment perspective. Again, it all comes down to sponsorship. It all comes down to our leadership. It all comes down to that accountability and ready to change. Being said that from that perspective, we take a deep down, have multiple ways we can skin this cat, right? Basically, you talk about all the, your ecosystem currently on the left side to can I go to a shared services model, like a service model, still have a portion of it on-prem which you make to make your life comfortable and understanding your burn rate, OPEX, and kinds of stuff, and 
com then attain complete cloud migration where when you go to cloud, there are certain things we have to change on a mindset and adoptions on our side as well, because a lot of these things are new, not necessarily completely new, but necessarily uh, it's an innovation aspects of how we look at it. But what got us there is basically takes care of what the main problems and the investments we have. If I take and apply to a industry, like if you're a financial focused kind of industry where we have seen that there are many applications which are purposely built for that, in finance industry, especially in the banking example, I did a re did a recent study around it that a 60-year-old 60 60 year technology, COBOL, is still pre very prevalent. Around 45 to 48 percent of applications are still written in COBOL, which means those applications are not going away. But that has to the information has to be ingested into a back office ERP to modernize aspects of it. There, it's not that not not trying but it's about that the cost of change versus the leap of faith is costing them plus the documentation it's it's about all kinds of aspects of logic in there and not, uh, and if you look at our modern education system is not even touching those topics so that people can go take a look at them and and you know make them more come out, come out, come out commodity rather than being so, but there are some innovative companies are looking at saying that how do we change those COBOL aspects of it or some custom built, which are purpose built into, turn into a, a salvageable, salvageable assets without having to change a lot. So that, again, these are some other things we are going through. If you're a finance company, you're going to have multi-system that's given on top of it. We have to go through an aspects to attain, but you have to have to make some hard decisions. And the secondary, second side of it is this is one side. Compared to the second part is the supply chain. You know, in kind of a supply chain world, you know how it is. Everything is now you're hearing a ton of it. Well, blockchain is going to come through because you have to share the information among partners, not one. It's a whole whole ecosystem. But how do you plan? How do you manage? And how do you rectify all your exceptions or manage the exceptions? All all kinds of stuff. So it's going to come. But that that's where the bigger scenario with the is you're going to have more applications which are purpose built acquisitions are happening by like oracle bought a ton of applicant uh, uh, vendors in the market and that's in our space but also have spreadsheets is very relevant very very important tool of choice for the business users in this space but reality is does our our existing erps or existing applications our enterprise applications are friendly with it, with microsoft because that's not going anywhere then then when they make decisions where is my system of record how how often my system of record to kind of alleviate some of the audit issues we have and then 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 the last way i want to touch upon is innovation innovation is even 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 challenging because we have back in supply chain you have a known product yourself kind of targeting back in finance is a known product but when it comes down to to the innovation where you're really building, if you're a manufacturer, you have, you're dealing with a lot of uh, product lifecycle management. Apart from supply chain and finance, everything is there, but this is the one other area where you're collaborating with your contract manufacturers, designers, and, and your internal engineers, external engineers, you're using CAD systems, everything together. Just an example is, I think last I saw was uh, I think a Boeing in order to build the next generation a, 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 a plane they have close to half a million vendor network to be working together to come with a final product but it's all driven by how they are exchanging their ideas and putting together their aspects of it to the cost finalizing the design and eventually sharing information and all kinds of stuff so being said that they are, they're very focused on innovation there in adoption aspects of it, that PLM has been one of those areas where we need to look for, again, having, this is one of the areas where all these product development companies, manufacturing companies, design companies, they're all having this kind of a strategy. We have to go through a hybrid strategy and finally transform into that we exchange ideas through it. After going through all this, we, we at Data will have our own innovation. We're looking at our customers, what we have done over a period of time. We look at all the, the talking to our to our business users, like it's how to, what is the innovation? As, as Steve Jobs has famously quoted saying that 
we don't we see as is as an opportunity not a threat because a lot of people in in the spaces who have been working on the technology space for more than 20 years have feel that okay cloud is going to take my job away no it's not it's an opportunity for us to do some of the uh, wisdom you have some of the challenges you acquired challenges you have faced and come up with a way to make more like a component driven we've been hearing about service oriented architecture for 20 years but we never were able to adapt but again some of the those are the desires there's a desirability because we at the data will work very closely with our, our customers to understand and listen if i listen the same question three, three times then it's an opportunity if i listen to once but i has there's an interest because we have to start validating it's called theory of experimentation and eventually again we all have to go through and apply viability viability not only has yes we can solve with technology yes we can solve with the process but reality is is it sizable cost enough for implementation and then then comes the feasibility aspect we look at saying that is it feasible with the current stack customer has is it feasible to scale is it feasible to reach outreach and and for that to do we apply some implementation lessons learned and some inspirations from what's happening in the market with all these big companies who are doing so much of innovations in the market and apply and validate and eventually we end up in innovation so we uh, with this innovation we focus on as as a provider as an ip we focus more around that if you make a product it has to be for masses it has to be more not only for our internal consumption to make our our engagement successful in much much better way reduce our and if gain efficiencies and also to the mass con saying that yes they have bought, they bought and invested in one that they are right to use it many times resulting from all these kinds of think tank and all kinds of innovation and internally we came up with this we call it as a value boost value boost is basically is is because as i said in the starting that we have pandemic and we have all other factors are driving saying oh okay i have to get something done next quarter back in the day we used to say quarter are you are you um uh, 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 because we have to start doing it we cannot say that we cannot do it's impossible those are all those are all some other challenges we have but we ended up finding our way looking at our putting our own you know thought process in the blender and come up with saying that how do i show the progressive increment of migration <clears throat> migration with one of the biggest thing we're going to have is that that term basically which means if you if you want to do an x amount of weeks or at months we need to st stick with it the only challenge you're going to have is the scope side of the story that comes from sponsorship and and the stakeholder involvement and also keeping the budget on budget on time so this, those are some of the things we went through and said like how do we get this to make them into chunks of piece and start migrating like a lego black one process at a time to the cloud so that the business gets the confidence and we get the value of delivery we become more suddenly like a, a service provider within the within the internal technology community again being said that we broken down into you know, these are the objectives we want to target and the key features around it and basically some objectives we have to lead our, our our business by example and eventually one of the things we have to make compromises early is that customization is one area you can have a bone of contention and we always call faster deployment but no shortcuts but we have to be regular we have to thoroughness on that situation which which comes with collaboration and communication and also as we are growing uh with the cloud side they all have release update cycles we need to take this experience into consideration and we are not marketing here we are delivering a strategy here so we all have to be very mindful around it that if some change happens we need to find our plan a b and c versus it's not possible i need more time that's again from a provider perspective you always wants to be honest with you and you guys with the uh, with, uh, with the customers and other side of the story all are looking at saying that a faster time doesn't mean shortcuts doesn't mean low cost cost all cost and speed always been the chicken or the egg we have to go through that process and come with you know how we fit natively within the within the erp footprint our cloud footprint so that we don't have to 
look back but scale on that foundation and some of the objectives and features we have then 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 you can ask the question okay why data will there a lot of people have done it i said but yes we have proven and we have, we don't believe in concept called uh thinking for a fire hose we all we, we we internally has done that experimented some made sure that there's a success success story for it not just uh, just claim to fame and eventually there's a lot more to be done lot more stories to stories to be told we are globally available around the clock and some nook and corner of the world that are actually uh, trying to innovate with the cloud solutions we can leverage those stories and we have a broader coverage around the whole enterprise not just a piece of the pie actually that makes us a little bit qualified to bring our strategy our execution ability and also our our lessons learned from all of them so that we can pass on so that we are we both are successful that's why we are we bring that stuff and we always billing time and money we call it as but time versus value time is from from a delivery perspective value is from business user we being right now why are we so focused on buying a new device every x number of years because it's it gives you that ability and scale and an opportunity for us the same thing we need to treat the when we buying our own <clears throat> goods we are our services we are buying we are looking at value same thing when we are delivering from a technology community standpoint to our business we need to they are our customers we need to test them through and give them the services so that if they are successful we have more projects coming in not just a one and done situation back in the day and because constantly it's innovation constant improvement and unlimited process opportunities we have going forward that's the reason why time is very important but on the side we also have to be very much on to our value side of the business so being said that we have broken down into different packages which includes a piece of it only to do those kinds of things we talked about through again um, uh, this is a very high level depiction of it but i i'm going to go through a few of them down but when it comes down to consolidation is infrastructure side we all look at app means is modernizing your customizations you are eliminating or reducing your risk and then and basically when you go down to the saas cloud is all about unlimited features unlimited functionality eventually it's all up to us saying that when i have to do some new functionality you don't have to do a major upgrade it's there it's up to us to basically look at that and do a testing internally and scale it up to our business needs are and also the if of maintenance is coming down you are almost act, uh, current and we go from there being said that we have broken down into the major packages we have internally we have based upon our experience and stuff this this duration is is an average duration we do uh, we always constantly improvise on top to gain value to our customers but we don't want to lose scope and sight about processes uh when we buy a package from oracle we always say oh we have to implement not necessarily you have to implement it's there but if you optimize your processes align with it we go from there these are some of the packs we target uh with our customers and then this is one of the details around saying that if i have to come back and say i'm going to do it in next number of weeks but i need to be honest what what are we trying to do and looking at uh, the small and medium businesses to again if it's a bigger corporation we need to look for but when it is a, a smaller corporation there is a, a footprint we can implement them so they can be up and running and modernizing it versus coming out from a spreadsheet being said that this is just one an example but we have other areas of enterprise processes we cover as per the business needs are we have a similar package we put together we size them by talking to them and we go from there because we have some back because when when customers are making the making this migration they are also trying to leave some bad practices bad habits and going into the uh, the full force of the new side of the tooling what oracle is providing right now this is on the cloud side then we have a similar aspects of financials aspect of it there is a plenty of them there's a core aspects of it to specialized how do you look at it then eventually we have a similar scope of it we have reduced around it yes there are these are some of the things we see that everybody is coming and asking us 
but we are we have to we have to put together make sure that we go live first like a, a crawl walk and run that way you're standardizing processes your best practices maximizing your investments a value uh, then you're scaling up after that as optimization for based on the platform it provides then then the similarly supply chain again apart, supply chain needs finance we just want to say that there's a specific aspect of supply chain which is very relevant to planning is one area it's modernizing like how where snops are becoming more challenging because you need to know your cost you need to know your revenue price and you need to know where the inventory is because that impacts your revenue and also it also impacts your cost which mean, which means you're going to hit our bottom line again we have a similar aspects of it and we take a supply chain we don't boil the ocean but boil enough that we are we are successful to for my business users uh, if they're doing five steps today if i can reduce the number of steps and scale them it's sustainable we are we are way ahead of the curve rather than trying to be perfect the very first time because we have to build towards perfection we're not going to be perfect in the very first attempt then there are other optional things we provide apart from that being said that oh this is not the only thing we do we're not going to be saying uh, this is a, this is a block you're going to sit in there if i have to do improvise a lot we have other things we have in the toolkit we provide as a result of it but we'll be mindful around it because this will be like a question will be asked around can we live with it without it if the answer is yes then we this is going to be an extension which will be a part of the phase 2 which is going to be a, a challenge if it is not that i need to some critical it's mandatory we we will suggest you that you need to take this and we will be mindful around so we have made a lot of progress into it it's not like we have not done this is going to add a little incremental or sizable amount of investment to it to make sure the value is from because we understand if that a erp is not built for all industries it's going to be very specific uh, that but it is it is like a clay where you're making your own uh solution around it and making that enhancing so that you're putting you're within the framework of the situation because uh erps have come a long way and being in the cloud is more challenging around it and apart from that when you're done with the implementation now how do i sustain now a lot of a lot of executives ask me um and the board ask me about how do we sustain you know every every month every every quarter every quarter releases Uh, depending on what portfolio you bought from oracle some are a monthly some are quarterly some are half yearly some are you know whichever the way you look at it but oracle is now standardizing the release updates once you are in cloud nobody wants to have continuity challenges because we have less aspects of touching but have we plan have we execute and have we sustain so these are three things we we have perfected it i would not call perfected we have optimized it what customer needs are so we come in on a quarterly basis basically we going to find those critical part if you are a payroll or if you are a supply chain if you are some integrations which is critical integrations those things have to be tested out to me in a way and if you are a customer facing applications or built on top of a cloud we just have to make sure there's no disruption for it then we do some kind of a lessons learned we have put together some things that consideration for our customers as a package and then the, the third part of it is now with the pandemic and retention issues be it talent is been is been taking their uh, different turn about their kind of stuff we have come up with a, a model to do the level to le- we can, depending on what your needs are we can uh, sizable opportunity we can put together which can sustain manage and also all your technical and other um technology agnostic aspects of it where teams are not able to pick up as a customer but they still want to have uh some kind of support we have done packages around and again as i said we put together a, an operational sustainability which includes both a quarterly release and the managed services part or only this but that we go through this but we have a metric we actually optimize those utility like a utility based packages because that way we are mindful about your operational expense ex- expense and uh, depending on what you look at it we have done complete it as a service where we do the business help desk to all the way down to 
um, root cause and resolution aspects of it and and also work with business on a monthly monthly review and provide them the findings and observations about training or or some kind of a challenges with business adoption kinds of stuff uh, and also we have to look at whether whether everybody says we have implemented out of box but we need to look at that that some of those user experience changes or how customized you are depending on the nature of the industry you're going to have some enhancements and so we have to look into consideration to come up with a sizable the opportunity for us but there are some assumptions made in the, uh, and the key assumptions we're building this kind of a kind of a offering product for uh, from us is that that uh, the data right if you if you are been on a cloud for if you are on your ERP for X number of years, you know your data very well. But on the other side, there's no upgrade in the cloud. You have to re-implement them. But there's also aspect of there is only a rules of engagement about how much data is too much data going into the cloud to operate versus there's a there's a age a age old data. I have a I have a customer who is 100 years old, but they have the system for the last 40 years. But not all the 40 years of data is going to come to cloud but they have a strategy they built around having a cloud um, data lake or data warehouse or whichever you call it as, but then plug them back into ERP and so that they're continuously doing data science and all other initiatives, but those are all important for us because you know your data very well. The second aspect of it is basically your subscription number of users aspects of it. The methodology has changed. We just have to make sure that you work with it collaboratively and you work with Oracle and kinds of stuff to get there. The, 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 and also the sizing environments. And normally we suggest a dev, a test, and a prod. But when you're, buying, when you're acquiring your licenses, you might have made an assumption saying that, oh, we only have one plus one, uh, which also means that that's not going to fly sometimes for some purposes, but you have to compromise a little bit. But we know how it is and how we can work with that situation and some dependencies. Um, if it is an structured ERP data, the data models are pretty good, but if you have like a age-old ERP, which is which is non-standardized ERP or some kind of situations, you have custom built on, on top of it. Those things we need to look into that. And, and automation is delivered, does not necessarily mean it's, it's applicable, but we need to go crawl, walk, and run, as I said. It is there, but until we trust and we test, uh, test and trust the ability of repeatability. We would we would not basically go through that that fast. Basically, these are some of the dependencies and some of the exclusions we look for. And being said that, DataWell provides an ability for how to help you guys as an organization to plan the journey and help them to put together all the relevant sponsorship kind of support information for you to help you through. That's a part of our advisory. And as a part of the take the journey part is we will be a part of your implementation, driving through and be that voice and with an independent voice aspects of it to show that if you go this path, you might run into a roadblock. Are you willing to take that path? Or are you gonna try to improvise on top of it? Sometimes we both will be on the same page saying that Oracle is not delivering the and, and the strategy. How are we gonna survive? We can go through that and eventually we have to make you guys accountable and help you to gain what we are trying to implement so that so we are all successful and then eventually get the, what the potentials are, um, aspects of it for, by achieving those kinds of situation. Being said that, so we, we empathize with your time we empathize with the business what the speed they want. That's the only way we can realize the value value aspects of it in the whole as a uh, whole story. That we have to support your operations systems. We have to give the reliability. We can look at your audit findings and do uh, some kinds of um, opportunities there. And we have to provide the governance aspects of it. Can being said that can. Um, any any questions? Um, uh, oh, I know we'll put the floor, and um, so so Mike, any questions uh, on so far? Yeah, I'm not seeing any questions um, so far. Uh, so 
thank you very much uh, for presenting, Hermod. Um, did another great job. Uh, and again, we'll post this on the in the knowledge base. So um, sure. this will conclude the webinar. So thanks, everyone. Thank you very much. And thanks for all your time. Yeah. Bye.